let's take a look at some brand new Pokemon ideas that could be created for an Egypt Pokemon region. All of these ideas are based on the wildlife, folklore, and mythology from Egyptian culture, and I tried my best to make sure all of these creatures collectively would represent the vast history of Egypt. As I go through them, I'll talk about what they're based on, their typing, and what their abilities could be. Okay, first up, let's take a look at the regional variants that could be in an Egyptian Pokemon region. These are versions of existing Pokemon that have adapted and evolved to the environment of the Egypt region and have received new designs, abilities, and typings. As always, I have to say that we have no idea if regional variants like Lolan forms will continue on in the Pokemon games, but regardless, these are all the ideas I have for Egyptian regional variants. The first couple variants to talk about are ghost poison versions of Raiolu and Lucario that are based on Anubis, the Egyptian god of the dead. Now, Lucario is already partially based on Anubis, or at least a general depiction of a jackal, but I wanted to make a variant of the line that really embraced the idea of being a guardian of the dead. I feel like a typing of Ghost Poison helps this line reference Anubis' association with embalming alongside death in general, and I imagine that within the Egyptian region there could be a legend about how these variants were said to help shepherd ancient people into the afterlife. For their abilities, I think they could have either Cursed Body or Poison Touch, while Mega Lucario would receive a Ghost-type version of Aerolate. The next regional variants we have are versions of Zorua and Zorark based on the Egyptian god Set, who is also known as Seth. In Egyptian mythology, Set was a god of chaos, disorder, and violence, and was often depicted as an indeterminate animal called the Set Animal which references a combination of an aardvark, jackal, and fennec fox. Considering that Zora and Zorark not only fit Seth's whole vibe of chaos and deception, but that they're also based on an animal resembling a fennec fox-type creature, I felt like them having a regional variant based on Seth would work out well. Dark fighting type is what I decided on for the two of them, and for their abilities they would have Scrappy and a brand new one I'm calling Sandblood, which makes it so that when they enter battle they summon a sandstorm that doesn't hurt them. This is meant to be a reference to how Set was also a god of the desert and storms, and summoning a sandstorm upon battle to confuse and irritate opponents sounds just chaotic enough to work. The next regional variants are versions of Sandile, Crocorock, and Crocodile that are based on mummified crocodiles. In ancient Egypt, there was a cult devoted to the Nile crocodile god Sobek, who was a human with the head of a crocodile. This ancient cult would mummify any crocodiles that died to send them off properly to their deity, and they would dress them in extravagant riches and gold. As you can probably tell by the designs of these variants, they're heavily based on the mummified crocodiles that this cult would offer up to their god. The ghost typing is pretty self-explanatory, and the steel typing comes from the fact that, as I mentioned, the cult would dress the mummified crocodiles in extravagant riches. For this line's abilities, they would have Mummy and a brand new one called Hollow, which halves the damage they take from physical attacks. Next up, we have a Scarab-inspired variant of Pinsir. Scarabs were very important iconography in ancient Egypt, and there were many amulets and symbols made depicting them due to their importance in ancient Egyptian religion. I would take a wager that even if you don't know their historic legacy in the country, you've probably seen scarabs in a movie or video game set in Egypt, because pop culture always uses scarabs whenever doing something related to the country. Now one thing a lot of people might not know about this scarab is that it's a type of dung beetle that rolls around a ball of dung that it uses as food. I guess that's not sexy enough for Hollywood to put in their movies, but the Buddyverse is certainly going to use that detail. This variant of Pinsir becomes a bug poison type and carries a ball of dung around with it that it uses for various purposes. It can throw the ball at enemies with a signature move called Stink Ball, which is a medium power physical attack that has a chance to poison enemies, and its ability, Mobile Feast, allows it to to gain nourishment from the dung and recover a minimal amount of health each turn. For those disappointed that Pinsir doesn't become a regal, godlike deity for its regular variant, I think its mega evolution might be more up your alley. For its mega, it truly embraces the legends and high status it was given in the region's ancient past, and becomes a godlike bug psychic type with Levitate as its ability. Moving on, we have versions of Numble and Camrupt that are based on a dromedary, otherwise known as the Arabian Camel. Numble and Camerupt are already based on camels, but these variants become closer to the one-humped, arid living creatures that are found within Egypt. These versions are able to traverse long distances of the Egypt region on minimal amounts of water, and they become pure ground types with sand rush and thick fat as their abilities, while Mega Camerupt gets stamina. 
Next up, we have variants of onyx and steelix based on a substance called desert glass. This is a material often found within the deserts of Libya and Egypt and nobody is quite sure where it comes from. Many speculate that it originates from meteorites and it's apparently been around for a while because the ancient pharaohs of Egypt had jewelry carved from this substance. Desert glass is truly mysterious and if we tap into the idea of it being from space, I think these variants could be formed from a celestial-like material. Onyx would become a rock psychic type gaining advanced psionic capabilities from the magical rocks it's made out of. While while Steelix would be a steel psychic type. For abilities, they would have Tinted Lens and Desert Crystal, which is a new ability that doubles the Pokemon's attack in a sandstorm. The final regional variant I thought of for the region might be a little weird, so just stick with me as I go over it. It's a special Egyptian variant of Eevee that can evolve into two brand new Eeveelutions, Elixion and Champion. I know this is a little unorthodox, but it actually ties heavily into Egyptian mythology when you break down the idea. So let's run through my thought process. As I'm sure you've heard, cats had strong religious and social importance in ancient Egypt. They were heralded for killing poisonous snakes and protecting the pharaohs, and that raised their cultural status so much that there were numerous Egyptian deities depicted with the head of a cat. Two of these feline deities were known as Bastet and Sekhmet, and originally they were thought of as one goddess. It's unclear when they split into two, but when they did, they both went on to represent different things. Bastet was said to protect people from poisons, while Sekhmet was a fighter and warrior goddess. How all of this history ties into the Egyptian Eevee is that its base form is revered in the region and for centuries has only been attainable by the royal family. It can evolve into two brand new evolutions that are based on Bastet and Sekhmet, and if its physical attack stat is its highest, it will become the fighting type champion with the ability's huge power and guts. But if its special attack is higher, then it will evolve into Elixion and gain a poison typing along with the ability's natural cure and poison point. Okay, moving on to the next section of new Pokemon, we come to the common Pokemon. These are all the standard, non-legendary Pokemon you'd find roaming around the region, and they'd make up the bulk of new creatures you can battle, capture, and train. First up, we have a Pokemon based on a Sphinx. The Great Sphinx of Giza is one of Egypt's biggest landmarks, and it's a large sculpture of a lion-like creature with the head of a human. The purpose of this Sphinx is unknown, but there are many theories about why it was created. Many speculate that the ancient Egyptians believed this creature would protect the Giza Plateau, while others think the Sphinx was made as a tribute to the pharaoh Khafre, as its face and royal headdress bear many similarities. Regardless of why the Sphinx was created, there's no doubt that it's a prominent landmark of Egypt, and I wanted to make sure there was a Pokemon in this region based on it. This Pokemon line starts out as a pure ground type, and then its final evolution becomes a ground steel type which gets a little more futuristic. For its abilities, it has Dry Skin, Rock Head, and a new one called Pharaoh's Rage, which raises the Pokemon's attack and defense when it's hit by an opponent of a lower level. Next up, we have the Pika clone of the region, which is an electric rock type based on the Pale Gerbil. This is a gerbil that's endemic to Egypt, and it makes great inspiration for the region's Pikachu-esque Pokemon like Dedenne, Pichu, and all the others before it. The Pokemon's name is Gerbolt, and it's able to tuck its body into itself and hide as a rock when it's scared or sleeping. It has two brand new abilities, including Static Storm, which increases the power of electric moves and sandstorms, and Tucked, which activates when Gerbolt is below 50% health and increases its defense by two stages while its speed is lowered by one. The next Pokemon is a two-stage bird Pokemon based on the Egyptian Vulture. It takes a lot of inspiration from the Egyptian god Nekbet, who was a vulture goddess that was said to protect Egypt and the pharaohs, and that's where the fairy typing for this line comes from. It's a very protective Pokémon that will shelter and protect weaker creatures, and it has Pixelate and Big Pecs as its abilities. Flying in like a swarm of locusts, it's a… well, locust Pokémon! This new monster is based on the Egyptian Locust, which is a grasshopper-like bug that has an insatiable hunger. I wanted to spice the idea up a little bit, so alongside this Pokemon being a bug type, it's also part Dark, which is a reference to the Ten Plagues of Egypt. It has a new ability called Dark Swarm, and it almost becomes a reverse wishy-washy where when its health gets below a certain amount, it swarms up with others and changes into a much more powerful form. Going forward, we come to a Pokemon based on an ostrich. Ostriches are commonly found throughout the African continent, and they're massive birds that can't fly, but make up for that by having incredible running speed. 
This ostrich Pokemon line represents that idea by having literal lightning fast speed that it combines with intense kicking moves for maximum damage. The residents of the region will often ride these fast Pokemon through the arid deserts and they have brand new abilities called Charged Feet which makes kick moves have a chance to paralyze opponents and Fast Pace which will raise the Pokemon speed if it KOs an opponent. So obviously Yamask and Cofagrigus would be present in this Egypt region, but I also thought of another Pokemon that could pair nicely with them. It's based on the concept of the Mummy's Curse, which was a deadly curse said to befall anyone who opened the sarcophagus of a pharaoh and caused them bad luck, sudden illness, or even death. This Pokemon is inspired by the general idea of a pharaoh's curse, and it's found near Cofagrigus in ancient tombs and temples. It's thought that maybe in life this Pokemon was once an attendant of the Egypt region's royal family, and it's now a ghost ice type creature that has a new ability called Stale Air, which makes it so that hail has a chance to poison enemies. Let's travel to the past momentarily and talk about the two fossil Pokemon that would be in this region. As we've discussed, Egypt has had a lot of history with fossils in real life, so I made sure to make a couple ancient Pokemon fossils you could bring back to life in this region. First up, we have a Pokemon based on the extinct North African Elephant. This was an elephant that was first brought into Egypt by the Romans and Ptolemy Empire, and were trained to be war elephants. I imagine a history similar to that would be present in the Egypt region, with perhaps the ancient Poke Romans bringing this Pokemon with them when they tried to conquer the region a century ago, and when you revive this fossil elephant, it would be a rock fighting type with the abilities Memory, which reduces damage for moves that have already hit it, and Mountain Walker, which makes it immune to entry hazards like spikes. The other fossil is based on a Spinosaurus. This is an aquatic dinosaur that lived in prehistoric Egypt eons ago when it was all submerged by the ocean. It went from land to sea instantaneously and had a large sail that was said to help regulate its heat. Pokemon-wise, this would be a two-stage rock-water creature you could revive in the region, and it would have a new ability called Depth Hunter that increases its attack stat in the rain, as well as good old Storm Drain. Zooming back to the present, there's one more common Pokemon to go over, and that is the pseudo-legendary for the region. This Pokemon is based on the Ouroboros, an ancient symbol depicting a snake eating its own tail, which represents the broad concept of life and death and the cycle that all things go through. The Ouroboros has been adopted by many cultures and civilizations throughout the world, but it actually originates in ancient Egyptian iconography as a way to represent the cyclical nature of a year, as well as some Egyptian deities and the various forms they've changed into. It's a really cool, albeit kind of abstract concept, and how I interpreted this into a pseudo-legendary Pokemon is that the creature based on the Ouroboros is a fire dragon type that bites its tail to turn into a wheel. Once in wheel form, it spins around rapidly, generating fire, and it then launches itself at opponents. It would have speed boost and fire shroud, which makes the Pokemon immune to the effects of rain as its abilities. And because it is a pseudo-legendary, it would be found much later in the game and have decently high stats. Here comes the section I'm sure everybody is the most interested in, the starter Pokemon. These next few Pokemon are the three options you can choose between at the start of your adventure, and whatever you choose will be your partner as you journey through the Egypt region. Let's begin with the Fire Starter. This Pokemon is based on the Egyptian Cobra, a large, deadly, and poisonous snake that lives in Egypt's deserts. Because that wasn't quite dangerous enough for me, I decided to also mix in some inspiration from Egyptian mythology and include some references to the Egyptian god Apep. Apep, or Apophis, is an Egyptian god of destruction, chaos, and anarchy. It was viewed as the antithesis of light and good in ancient Egypt, and I wanted to get just a little tiny part of that evilness and put it into this Cobra starter, so that its final form becomes a fire dark type. Its hidden ability, because its normal one is Blaze like every fire starter's, is something called Flaming Fangs, which makes it so that biting moves have a chance to leave a burn. The second starter is the Grass Starter, which is based on an Egyptian Ibis. This is a type of bird native to Africa and Egypt, and it had a very prominent role in ancient Egyptian religion due to its link to the god Thoth. Thoth was said to be a god of wisdom, mathematics, and time. And for this Ibis starter Pokemon, I wanted to pay respect to Thoth and give this line a secondary typing of Psychic when it evolves to represent the more cerebral things. 
It of course has overgrow for its ability, but its hidden ability is forewarn, letting it tap into its vast psychic knowledge and determine what moves its opponent has. The final starter is a water normal type Pokemon based on a dugong. No, not that dugong. This dugong, the one in real life, is the type of aquatic animal found on the coasts of Egypt and numerous other places in the Pacific Ocean. It's part of the Sirenia family of animals, which is what dugong the Pokemon is based on, and though we already have a Pokemon based loosely on this idea, I still wanted to create my own for this region. This line of dugong inspired Pokemon live on the region's coasts and in the Nile based river. They're meant to loosely resemble Happy, an ancient Nile god responsible for flooding the river and moving fertile soil into the area, and they can sing a song of prosperity that helps plants grow. Torrent is their normal ability, and Thick Fat is their hidden ability. Okay, we've made it to the final section of new Pokémon for the region, the Legendaries. These are the ultra-powerful Pokémon that reside in this Egypt-based land, and are so rare that they've become the stuff of legends. The two main legendaries of this region are united by a common theme of consequence. The idea of every person's actions having a consequence or response to them that can either be good or bad. In the case of our first legendary, Armadur, it represents negative consequence and within the lore of the Egypt region, it punishes those who make bad or harmful decisions. It's a fire ghost type legendary based on the funerary goddess Amit, who was known as the devourer of the dead and eater of hearts. It judged people trying to get into the afterlife, and if you were found unworthy, your heart would be cast into a lake of fire and destroyed. I felt this concept really tied back into the theme of consequence and made for a perfect representative of bad consequences that can happen if you do bad things. It has a brand new ability called Devourer, which lets Armiter restore one fourth of its health when KOing another Pokémon. On the flip side of the Heart Eater legendary, we have Ethereum, who represents positive or good consequences that can happen by your decisions. In the region's ancient past, it gifted the people of the region with the large Nile-inspired river because it saw pureness in their hearts, and it brings light and peace to those it deems worthy. This Pokémon is based on Osiris, another god of the dead like Amit, but unlike the Devourer of Hearts, he represents more of the rebirth and reinvention side of things. For Ethereum's ability, it has something called Reincarnation, which means that whenever this legendary faints, one of the knocked out Pokémon in your party gets revived with 20% health. The third and final legendary Pokémon is a gigantic eagle that has two forms. One is a flying fire type based on the god Ra, while the other is a flying psychic type based on the god Horus. In Egyptian mythology, Ra and Horus are two deities that are strongly associated with the sun and sky. Ra is the more powerful of the two and is a primal deity that is said to have created the entire universe and represents the sun in general. Horus, on the other hand, is less powerful but still shares a role in being associated with the sky. Now the idea with this legendary Pokémon is that it embodies an ancient myth surrounding Ra and Horus. In the legend, Ra was poisoned by Isis and while he was out of commission, Horus took over as the reigning deity of the sky. The way I've interpreted this myth into the legendary bird Pokémon is that it used to be the ultra-powerful raw form all the time, but lost its power after losing a high-stakes battle and shifted into the weaker Horus form to preserve its strength. Think of this almost like Giratina and its altered form versus its origin form. Thankfully, just like Giratina, there's a special item you can find in the region that will revert this legendary back to its original uber-powerful version, which is the Fireflying Raw Manifestation. The Horus form, officially known as its astral form, has keen eye as its ability while the raw form, aka the solar form, has its own version of drought as an ability called divine creation. And those are all the new Pokémon ideas I thought of for an Egyptian Pokémon region. I'm sure there's more awesome Egyptian Pokémon ideas I missed, but these Pokémon are what I came up with after extensive research about the country, and I hope you guys like them. Feel free to share your favorites in the comments section below, or even build a team of them and official Pokémon to take with you on your journey through this hypothetical Egyptian region.